in more detail or like, you know, like eat some chicken or something while um, we're doing this, you can go ahead and download our code and slides. And if you're kind of like confident, you can go and get your King Tone um, database all set up and stuff like that. And don't forget to ask questions um, in the chat anytime. The reason why we can ask questions is because we have, besides myself, the awesome Genji and the awesome Jesslyn in the chat as well. And um, if you need to ask some questions, it usually helps if you kind of like add them or uh, at them, for example. Yeah. And they'll be um, doing a lot of like links and stuff like that in, um, you know, the background as well. So definitely pay attention to those. I'll try and go through things very slowly as well. So, yeah, definitely pay attention to that. Um, and so, like I said earlier, watching the live stream once and then watching the recording, how can you do that? We have a YouTube channel as well. I know, very fancy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And um, you can um, subscribe to that if you really care about our stuff. It's right here. It's the Kingtone Developer Program on YouTube. And um, they have notifications and all that fancy stuff, I guess. But um, also, we upload our recording, our recordings. And the recordings have um, hand-edited subtitles by yours truly, which is quite fun to do. And uh, yeah. So that's a good way to catch up our content, especially today if like, um, you know, it's it's 10 o'clock in the morning over here in Japan, but, um, you know, it might be, you know, like eight at night, you might've just got off work and stuff and, you know, you're just tired and you want to just have a snack and um, listen to some dude blab about databases and tech. That's cool too. It's totally cool. You don't have to actively follow along. I will kind of try and gauge later who's actively following along, who's just kind of like listening this time. So, um, Definitely respond to that. Japan looks amazing. Japan looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this green screen behind me. It looks awesome. Yeah. Do we have a... Uh, yeah, there we go. Thanks, Mr. Tsunaga. Like that. <laughs> um, also, for anybody today, if you uh, stay till the end, we're doing a gift card raffle, like usual. You can get a $25 Amazon gift card. Um, that's for anybody who um, is participating here today. We'll give you a secret word at the end, and then you fill out this um, survey, which is, trust me, it's less than two minutes long. And um, if you put in the secret word, then you can get that. I'll tell you the secret word later. And then for anybody that is participating from a North American address, um, we also have swag, you know, cheap, cheap stuff. It's real cheap. Don't don't fool yourself. You know, water bottles, like, you know, hoodies, um, what, chargers, stuff like that, right? So uh, you can get that, but only if you're in a North American address. And the reason is because it is very, very cheap, cheap stuff. And we tried to send like a $2 water bottle to um, Africa once, and it was like $100 in shipping. It was just silly. So yeah, only North American addresses. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's us for Kintown. And um, what are we going to make today? We have this cool like GIF that we made, but um, I'll just I'll just show you the real thing um, instead of this video real quick. And then we're going to talk about first, like what it is that we're making and sort of like break it down into parts, kind of try and think like a programmer. Like if you were trying to recreate something that you saw online as like kind of an exercise of your programming skills. And then um, after we break this down, the way that I like to kind of tackle projects, and this goes for work and in my personal life is I usually like to start with data like that's so we get all of our data in our database like set up so we like okay i have this data from a database then we go into code and kind of try and manipulate it and get it to do what we want right um so what's probably going to happen today as well and i will try and explain like what's going on all right open api so what are we making today um this is a view of our kintone database and um i'll explain more about it later but what happens is we are gonna make a new entry in our database, right? And we have these cool options, right? And we're gonna be passing a text string of some kind to OpenAI's DALI image generation um, endpoint. It's gonna read that text for us, spit back an image, and then we're gonna save that image in here. So let's see, I want a dog who looks uh, confused, holding a, hey, um, if you're in the chat right now, tell me what the dog should be holding. Anything that's appropriate. Please be appropriate. Taco. I saw taco first. Taco. And is uh, wearing a hat and uh, new shoes. Yeah. And so when we save this like that, okay, our data is saved. We have this cool button that we've created up here. Generate images. Ooh, spinny, spinny. 
reload the page. Whoever said dog holding a cat is very funny, though. Is that JB? Who is that? That's funny. <laughs> and then OpenAI has spit back this image to us. We saved it. And God, that's ugly. Oof. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, the future of AI is uh, future of AI is strong. <laughs> yeah, but you can um, save your beautiful, beautiful AI artwork directly into the database, which is kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's it's fun technology. It's fun technology. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna be what we're making today. But let's try and break it down into parts, right? So that'll be easier to visualize what we're going to be coding today. Um, so obviously like our end goal is to get an image, right? From the open AI um, endpoint. And we need to, according to their like API, which I'll talk a little bit about this. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but we give them some text and then we give them some other options like how many images and um, the size of the image. I feel like this is close to a Snoop Dogg album cover. <laughs> yeah. And um, what it's gonna do is it's going to give us back a response. And that response is going to have a date time, like when the image was created, and then it'll have the data. You can specify whether or not that is a URL to some data, which um, if you do URL, then OpenAI keeps it on their servers for like three days and then they delete it. So you won't be able to save your beautiful, beautiful image. But um, if we specify that we want base64 in JSON, base64 is a way of um, transmitting data in just like long, complicated strings. Um, and then if we get that b64, we can turn that into an image um, file, and then we can upload that file to Kingtone and save it forever. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Okay, so what we need then is, besides like API tokens, like authentication, stuff like that, but what we really need is some kind of like text prompt, right? Some kind of text prompt, okay. So we need to have our database have like some text and we need to take that text and kind of format it into a, um, you know, a string that's readable for AI, you know, because it tends to like like English sentences like that. Um, so I have here some options like that, but what we're really gonna be picking up is like the user options that they pick, because we want our user to be able to like customize it, right? Otherwise we could just do like a huge blank, you know, field like this, and we could just do uh, a dog, God, a dog <laughs> holding a doggo wearing, and you can just type it out yourself, right? But that's not super user, um, you know, friendly. And so what we wanna have is these options then in our backend, we pick up these options, put it together into a little like readable string, and then pass it onto the API endpoint, right? That API endpoint is going to take some time to generate the image because it does take time. So we need to hint, hint, asynchronously wait for the image to come back. Then once we have that image, upload it into our database and save it right here. There are some things today that I have kind of like pre-coded out. Um, for example, this cool, um, spinner, for example, that's um, like kind of we handled that coding for you and also some helper functions. Oh no. Um, and some helper functions, for example, like turning a base64 string into a file, for example, like that. And the reason why we did that is because today we just want to practice like hitting up APIs and saving the databases. And also be I myself, I just like Googled it and um, and I even used chat GPT once and I like, I could try and figure out how to convert base64 to files, but you know I don't want to spend my time doing that. That's not my wheelhouse, it's not my field. So I just Googled it, I looked on Stack Overflow and someone was like, yeah, here's a two-liner. And I copied that to our workshop. And you know that's kind of just the web dev life, right? I highly recommend working like that as well. Um, yeah, so do we have any questions or anything like before we kind of start getting out, like building out our database and anything like that? No. I need links. Uh, we'll get links. Um, we'll get links. So the this API reference stuff like that. We'll we'll post this later, and I think um, we have links to it. I'll talk about this now, I guess. If you uh, blip, 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 blip. there you go. Here's an already done workshop that I have. If you have our workshop cloned and stuff like that and ready to go. And I'll make this bigger. 
In this docs folder right here, we have the solution and the steps to today's workshop as well. And the steps are kind of like this written version of my presentation or what I'm talking about today, right? And I just kind of talk through things one at a time, like here's how you do what, blah, 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 blah. I have links to like the open API um, or open AI API documents in there and stuff like that. So you can definitely check those out as well. And also like if you have to leave halfway through or like, you know, you just, your stomach hurts, you know, gotta go to the bathroom and you're like, oh, I came back and I'm lost. That's totally okay. You know, we have the recording, we have the workshop steps all ready for you as well. All right. So let's go back real quick. And um, yeah, if there's no, uh, no questions, this was a terrible choice, by the way, Genji. <laughs> this is so ugly. It's almost frightening. Um, so if we're ready to get started, uh, first thing that we're going to do, like I said, I like to start with data. So let's get our database set up. And um, we're going to do that using Kintone because, like I said, I work at Kintone and I like it. But um, if you're at this point and you're like, oh, well, I, I really like Firebase and I'm really comfortable with that, it's okay. The only thing that's going to change is, one, like how fast it is to set up, and two, the API um, like endpoints that we've included in the code. You know, but you can totally do it if you want to. Um, so first things first, we're going to get our code and everything set up and just uh, make sure that our folders and our clones work. So git clone, and we're going to clone our repository right here. I'm going to go over to my terminal. I'm just going to do it in code directly this time. Yep, clone and into the repository. And um, if you're just getting new to coding and stuff like that, then you're like, whoa, 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 what's git clone? Um, you know, you might want to take a step and just kind of like listen to what I'm talking about today and then try and code along later. But um, yeah, you can get clone and that can be via the terminal, that can be via the desktop app, however you want to do that. Will this work in Conda? I don't know what Conda is. I don't know what Conda is, but that's okay. That's okay. But basically cloning a repository is a way of like sharing code like that. And um, so when we have our code right here, we're going to move into the code that we just downloaded. So here we have a huge, you know, like set of folders and stuff like that, that we just downloaded. And it's our launching off point for our code. Um, well, today's like a workshop. So like, it's like half finished code, right? That's on purpose. Sometimes, you know, most of the time, right? It should be working code, right? That you want people to get cloned, especially if you're like trying to get a job, right? And you're trying to like impress interviewers and stuff like that. I, um, First thing I check after looking at people's resumes and stuff when I'm hiring is I just go straight to their GitHub and try and download something and see how easy it is, um, which is fun. Usually I fail to like make the code work or install it, but that's actually on me. And then when they show up, they're like, no, it works. And I'm like, oh, oops, sorry. You know. <laughs> um, anyway, so we have our code and all that ready. And after we have freshly downloaded GitHub. This is gonna happen almost all the time with web dev. We need to install dependencies. Dependencies are like third-party packages. For example, that cool spinner icon. You know, I didn't code that myself. I just went on to a third-party package site on NPM and was like spinner and installed that, right? And you need to install them too if you are, um, if you have just cloned this repository. So what we need to do is NPM install, right? That, and that's going to set all of those up for you. 25 packages, audited 26, doesn't make sense. Yep. Um, Lily, uh, how do you get an open API key? Very cool, you're, you're way far ahead. Um, there is a link to that in the steps if you wanna go ahead in the steps. So just having GitHub is okay. If I'm just starting out, I don't need deployed sites on my resume. Um, depends on what stage of the resume, Taylor. Like. For me, like, I know I'm very comfortable working with code and, you know, just like saying like, oh yeah, this is how this works. And I look at source code, I read source code and I can kind of see what people are doing. Um, you know, but for example, in the first level interview, when you're talking to someone who's like in HR, for example, they might be like, what's this, you know? So, <laughs> you know, it, it might help to have something flashy and cool to show off as well, but that can either be a deployed site, that could be a video, you know, I don't know. All right. And so after we have done npm install for our local packages um, for this repository is right, in order to work with Kingtone 
more easily. Um, we have this package that we supply over here from um, Kintone, and it's called the Kintone Customize Uploader. The Kintone Customize Uploader is, strictly speaking, not 100% necessary. It doesn't like um, take your data or do anything like that. All it really does is it looks at your code base and you specify in like an environment file. We'll talk about that later. Like, hey, here's my URL for my database. Here's my username and password. Go and upload my code for me. And that's all it does. Um, and we need to install that globally like that. So that's why there's a hyphen G in the command that um, Genji has just put in the chat, right? So um, install this uh, Kintone Customize Uploader globally and be, um, install g i already have it all like installed so it's just going to tell me what are you doing but customize uploader and um that'll help us like kind of like move faster when we get to the coding part of our website you can always uninstall it later as well if you want just, you know yep cool 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 all right so we've set up our code base, and if you open up your favorite code editor, um, I'm just using VS Code right here, and you can see that you know we have a code base. Um, look at all that. Ooh, JavaScript. Wow, it's very short. It's going to get longer. And um, we have a bunch of stuff all over here. So it looks like we've successfully gotten our code, our launch pad ready um, to jump off of. And uh, we've installed our packages, so things are going to work. So you can see in our package.json, that npm install that we just did. Let's see, env commands, v for packaging, and spin.js. Ooh, there she is, the spinner. Very cool. All right. Yes, yes, yes. I see a couple people that have kind of like started just to like join. Um, if you're just joining, once again, um, hello from Kintone. I'm Sean. We have Genji and Jesslyn here. Um, we will have the recording for this workshop available, hopefully later today, if I edit it. And then um, also, um, you know, if you're kind of like a more of a visual learner, we have uh, the steps for the workshop here in the docs folder, if you clone our GitHub repository. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. How do I find the URL I created in Kintone? So today we're not dealing with the open API URL. Um, we are dealing with uh, the base64 um, response from there. So we didn't really uh, do anything with URLs. You could just like save the URL to a field in Kintone if you wanted to. Um, yep. I'm getting permission issues while trying to install Kintone Customize Upload Destroy. Um, sorry to say this, but um, that's probably out of my wheelhouse for this. Um, there could be a million issues like that. If you're on a Linux or Unix like, um, you know, Google it first, but maybe just try doing, yeah, pseudo. But, you know, I think the NPM does some weird stuff if you like mix permission levels. So you might have to fix a. Um, you might have to fix something very, very basic in your setup. Oh, um, so JB, what about the domain that we create? Okay, so we're gonna create a domain actually together right now, and that's how we're gonna get started with our database. I've been talking long enough, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we have our code ready, and we want to basically get and make a database with data, right? And then after we get that database with data, we hook it up to our code, then we manipulate the data, throw it off to open API, get back, and save it to our database, right? Um, so how do we go and get our database? Well, we need to go sign up for a Kintone database. So um, if you can go to kintone.dev slash new, like that. This is for our developer license registration form. And there is a lot of text here. And um, I think one of our lawyers wrote the text, but we made it very simple. Um, we do not um, keep your data we do not sell your data third parties. Um, this is free. You don't need a credit card to sign up. And as long as you don't spam the database, um, so like you can't store more than 25 gigs, um, you can't do like, you know, 500 requests a second, stuff like that. And um, I think you can only have five users. But other than that, it is a free online database for you to use. Um, which is a pretty darn good deal, in my opinion, especially when I was just getting started out coded like that. I was like, what, I have to pay for Firebase? You know, that's that's silly, but I mean, it makes sense, right? But um, yeah, this is a free web database for you to use. And um, can we have more than one domain? 
per email. Um, we wouldn't really know if you use different emails, but per email, I don't think so. I think it'll tell you like, hey, that's already an email. The only reason you need an email is um, in order to send a verification to prevent spam. And then uh, also it's your username when you uh, first log in. So if you are actively following along today and um, you wanna build this out and also just try an easy to use database, um, then um, fill this out right here. First name, last name, you know, you can see all my tests. I, uh, I helped make this form like that. Yeah, sure. And just kind of fill this out. And if you um, put things in here, what this information does is it helps us tailor our workshops and our content to you like that. Um, we are a small operation, just me, Genji, Jesslyn, and uh, the mysterious Will, our boss, sometimes. And uh, we actually do look at our data, and uh, we do use it to kind of like think about why we can make things more fun. So, yeah. What interested you? Mm, yeah. YouTube videos? Sounds good to me. Blah, 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 blah. And this bottom part right here is, um, this is the part where a lot of people kind of get confused. Create your Kingtone developer license subdomain. What the heck is a subdomain? So up here, I have my own personal one at sean.kingtone.com. You can see right here, sean.kingtone.com. And that's our URL, right? Um, I think that's what uh, JB was talking about earlier. Um, that Sean part is what I put in right here. And if you were to put in Sean, please don't. But if you were to put in Sean, it'll say it's not available because... I already have it. So um, that part that comes before the .kintone.com, that's your subdomain. And um, it can be whatever you want, you know, as long as, um, you know, you keep it cool. And that, I, although we don't really actively scan for domain names, so you could do like, I, I love feet.kintone.com, I guess, if you really want to. Totally cool. I'm the one who's looking through them. Oh yeah, Genji's the one that looks through them. So I definitely put I love feet. Kintone.com. Can we change the subdomain name in the future? No. No. You're stuck with I love feet.kintone.com forever. I mean, honestly, if you don't use it for like 90 days, then we close it down. But then you could just make another one. So I mean, you know. It's it's a free web database. Just make another one. Uh, so JB, you made a Kingtone subdomain in the past, and then you cannot find the one that you made in the past. That's a bummer. Mm, if you have to, just make another. It's fine. Once you um, fill this out and you sign up, then um, you can um, check your email. Definitely check your junk mail as well, and then you will get a like activation link, and you can activate the subdomain, and it'll take you to this cool login screen as well. So um, a quick show of hands, and also I'm going to use this to gauge participation, like who's actively participating, who's just kind of listening along. Um, if you have gotten a subdomain, you've cloned the GitHub repository, npm installed, also npm installed global Kintone customized uploader, don't forget that, um, and you've gotten to this login screen, then please throw up an emoji in the chat. It's on the login screen, it's late. Yeah, it, well, I assume it is late in most of the world, you know, I got my... Tully's coffee. Jesslyn, dog, thanks. Lily, smiley face. Jude, nice emojis. Uh, yeah, cool. Thumbs up, happies, like that. Ubuntu doesn't support emojis. Rock on, Linux. It's cool. Like that. Jessica, awesome. Ryan, awesome. Daniel, Genji, Mark, Jude. Cool, 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 cool. If you're on Linux, you get extra crud from me just because big nerd like that, I guess. Although Linux is not even like that, like subculture anymore. I feel like it's, it's pretty mainstream. Thumbs up. Yeah, nice, JB. <laughs> Forgive me if I pronounce your name incorrectly. It's Theresha Harden. Like that. Yeah, cool. No coding here for emotional support. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, Gabriel, you bring up a good point. I don't know my login name. Um, your login name is your email that you first... Um, you put into that form. So, you know, hopefully you put, you can remember that, whatever you put in there. Um, yep, so your login is your email um, for the first time. You can change your login name later. Um, I changed mine to Sean. But um, for this workshop, just keep it as your email or just like do like auto password with your browser, I guess. It'll be fine.
So we're moving on at a pretty good, um, pretty good pace. That's nice. Like that. All right. So it worked. That's great news. Good news. Good, 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 good. And so I know that a lot of you might be eager to like hop into your um, Kintone domain like that. Welcome to Kintone. And like you, if you really want to get started making a database, it's over here in the apps. Just click plus. I'll go through this later live um, with you as well. But um, for me, it makes sense. First, I would like, now that I have this Kintone subdomain, I want to connect it to my code first. And then we can build out some data and like what our database will look like. And then we can, um, Kintone is a SQL. Kintone is SQL. It is a relational database. It's not going to be like, incredibly super fast for doing like abstract database calculations like Mongo or, or NoSQL and stuff like that, but it's fast enough for 99% of things. I don't know. I make Facebook as big as Facebook first, and then you can worry about like Mongo or SQL, right? That's always how I feel. Um, although it is cool technology, don't get me wrong. So what we're going to do first is um, connect our code base to our Kintone subdomain. And then we're going to start putting out our um, our data and stuff like that, kind of like making our database. Admin portal or ticketing system. Oh, I mean, how many how many tickets are you selling? <laughs> you know? All right. So we're going to um, we're going to connect our database, and the way that we have connected them is we're going to be connecting them with what's called a .env env or environment file, and this is a pretty standard coding practice, um, especially in web um, development. And what a .env file does usually is it holds like configuration variables, for example, or it holds like super secret information that you don't really want your end users to see directly, right? And um, this is another thing that if you're um, looking for coding jobs, you're just getting started in the industry. One thing that I check for in people's GitHub uh, repositories is do they have a .env.example file? And if you have a .env.example file, it kind of makes um, installing your project or opening your project up or compiling your project a lot easier because it gives you a hint of like, oh, you might need these things in order to make this code work. And they get referenced in your code. And if you are um, uploading this .env file directly to uh, GitHub, then you know other people can read that, and they can be like, "Ooh, I see that they've uploaded um, their super secret OpenAI API token up here. Let's use that token and generate a bunch of ugly pictures and rack up a bunch of charges on their credit card." Yeah, yeah, Sangrid shut down my key because I accidentally uploaded my secret key. Yeah, so actually there's a lot of cool technology out there. Um, I think GitHub has like random bots that like try and search for API keys and then warn you beforehand. But honestly, if it's if it's up there like for even a couple seconds, it's probably gone, you know? <laughs> That's just the reality. So I, um, I always look for people like, oh, do they have a .git ignore file, right? And in that get ignore file, like, are they ignoring .env, right? Because that's really, really good practices. And that's always a big hint to me, like, okay, this person's, you know, pretty, pretty good at what they're doing. Yeah, there's Git Guard. There's a bunch of services and stuff like that. I don't know. I uh, Old school. Just do a git ignore. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy paste this .env .example file. Do not um, delete the file or, like, just rename that original one. Just copy paste it, right? We want to keep our .env .example file you know, for the future. And you're going to rename it to just .env. Yeah. And this is gonna have, if you can read some of these variables in here, lots of super secret cool information like usernames, passwords, our token, and things like that. So we're gonna go through and get these one by one, and that'll connect us to our um, database, and that'll connect our code to our database. Yeah. So um, let's start at the top. Right up here, we have our Kintone base URL. We have our username, password, and we're going to do those three first uh, because you just did those, right? You just signed up for a Kintone um, database. And hopefully, if you are uh, following along like that, then you know you can see that maybe your um, subdomain name is what you put up there. And I wish this was a little bit bigger, but you know, whatever. Here. There you go. Sean.kintone.com. 
So this time I'm doing it from a um, a place called Dev Events because we just have our own one for these cool live workshops that we do. So Dev Events is mine. And then our username like that and our password as well. I'm going to um, fill these out later off screen. Um, and then when we finally upload our code, but for here, um, put your username. It's probably your email, like I said, um, and your password in here as well. I forgot to prepare an M file to copy paste in. So I'm just going to do this later off screen. Although I probably will end up showing you my open AI token, but don't worry, I will delete it immediately after this workshop. I will also not tie a credit card to it as well. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. So um, put in your username and your password, all right? And the reason why we have these top three, Kingtone base URL, Kingtone username, Kingtone password, this is for the Kingtone customize uploader tool that we had to globally install later. And what it does is it looks at this .env file. It says, oh, here's where I need to upload to. Here's their username, here's their password. Let me help them by uploading the code for them. You know, that's, that's all that does. But we also have some variables that get used within our code base as well. And you can actually look for this um, Later on, I'll talk about our API calls, which we kind of coded out for you here in requests, but our AI post request API call, our variable API token is equal to import meta m v open AI token, right? So that's where that's coming from. That's where we're going to be used. And this like, um, why they're separated like this, some have Vite in front of them and some don't. This is a um, Vite convention. Vite is a, um, how would I describe this easily? Vita is working behind the scenes in our code base to kind of like neatly package um, all of our you know, dependencies together. It bundles up our JavaScript and minifies it for us and makes it easy to upload and spread around the web, right? That's kind of like at its most basic thing. Yeah, it's a build tool, yeah, pretty much. I tried to be a little bit more uh, expressive than that, but yeah, it's a build tool. Um, other build tools, Webpack is a very, very common one, you know. But Vite is um, very opinionated about environment variables. If you're using it in your code, in your code, and what I mean by in your code is like here in our AI post request.js, aka this JavaScript file, we're using this like um, open AI token. You have to put Vite underscore before your environment files in all caps. Um, otherwise, it will refuse to read them in like that. So definitely make sure that you don't edit that at all. Um, otherwise it can spend a lot of time. It'll cause a lot of debugging time. Yeah. So we have our Kintone subdomain right here. This is once again, whatever your subdomain is. If you put dev up there, it's going to be dev events again. Um, please zoom in a bit more. Yeah, sure. How's that? Is that okay? Cool. Um, so that's going to be dev events. The other things that we have to do, we have our Kingtone token, our API token, we have our app ID, and we have our Vite open AI token. Then we'll do that one last. That's our open API token. And like I said, if you're um if you're a little bit more advanced, then um you know you can go ahead and blaze on ahead and just chill and you know drink a smoothie while you wait for me to catch up. It's totally cool. Um where can we find the subdomain? It's at the top in the URL as well. I, my URL like is unable to be zoomed in for whatever reason, but up here, like you can see in the URL, sean.kintone.com, that's my subdomain. Yeah. All right. So next thing, what is the base URL? That is um, going to be um, same thing. So like mine was sean.kintone.com, it'll be sean.kintone.com, um, devevents.kintone.com. These are gonna be the same thing. And the reason why we had to split them apart is because Vite like, wants you to prefix things with Vite to use in your code. So we had to do it in two steps, yeah. All right, so where do we get our um, our Kintone API token like that? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new database, right? And then um, in our database, we're going to produce an API token as well. And it makes it really easy to do with Kintone. It's super fast, which is what I love because I just like doing front end um, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on my back end unless I'm trying to do something cool. So in your subdomain, right over here, you'll see something called apps like that. Just That's just databases, basically. We call them apps. Everything's an app nowadays, right? 
and we're going to create an app from scratch. And by creating an app from scratch, what this does is it opens up this editor that we can use to basically create an online database that is type safe, um, aka like I cannot put um, text into a number field. For example, I cannot put a non-date object into the date field. So it's type safe, which is also very important and um, cool to brag about. Um, and it allows us to create this just by dragging and dropping, um, which is really, really cool, convenient, and um, fast. And I really like it. We are not going to create our database just yet, though. Um, we're going to do that in the next step. We're trying to get our API token, right? And so our API token is going to be over here in App Settings, like that. So please click on App Settings. Yes, that's fine. I guess I'm going to name this um, AI Image App 2, because I already made one. You don't have to rename yours. You can rename yours or whatever. It's just for you to understand what this is. And you're going to go down to API token right there. So once again, new app, create app from scratch, app settings, like that. You don't have to make your database or anything like that. Just immediately go to app settings. You could try and make the database as well if you want to, I guess. App settings, API token. Right here. And you're going to click generate to generate an API token. Whoo, that was easy. And very, very important right here. Um, today, what we're going to be doing, if you uh, were listening earlier to my explanation, we're going to be first taking, aka getting from Kingtone, um, getting from our database a text string, right? We're going to be sending it to Open API or Open AI. API is going to send us back an image. And then we're going to send that image back to Kingtone. We need to add an extra permission here for our API token. We need to be able to view records, aka like get information from them. And we also need to be able to edit a record, right? Because we're going to be editing the record by saving that image back into it, right? So please make sure that you click view records and edit records. Make sure there's two checks right in here. Copy your API token. I will be deleting this one later. Don't you worry. And paste that right in here, V Kintone token. Save it. And that is your Kintone API token. Our database is type safe. So like even if someone were to like try and you know do um, try and do like you know something bad for our database, our fields are type safe. So our fields are type safe. And what that means is that you know like they couldn't like try and put like malformed data into our database, right? Like if I say it's a text field, only text is going in there, it's properly escaped. Yeah. Do I need to check the add records as well? Like that? Yes. Yeah? I apologize about that, guys. Are we adding a record? Um, We're not technically adding records. Check it anyways. Why not? We'll figure this out later. What I'm going to do at the end of this workshop, someone try and remind me. Um, I'm going to uncheck add records and then see if it still works. And I'm willing to bet that it does. Um, please click save as well. And then... Um, Right up here on the top right, click Activate App as well. Please make sure that you click Save. Um, if you do not click Save, you will have to generate a new API token because you didn't save it, right? You always got to save. It's a computer world. Thank you for pointing that out, um, Arif. And um, where can we find subdomain? Um, subdomain is in your URL bar up at the top of your browser as well. Yeah, what kind of app did I create? Just real quick. Um, I just created from scratch. So apps plus create from scratch. Um, you could also like import Excel files, um, CSVs, because right, an Excel file is just a table of columns and rows of data, right? It's a database. So you can import from that as well. Uh, we also have templates and stuff like that, but you're going to be creating an app from scratch here today. And then going to app settings. What is the app ID? You guys are like on top of it today. Thank you, JB. You guys are like, I don't even have a chance to chill and like talk about random stuff. I am being worked hard today, but actually it's good because I usually end up going over time. So let me chill. Let me chill. All right. So here it is, AI image app number two. Someone asked a very good question. What is the app ID? Thank you, JB. The app ID, if this is your first ever app, um, your first ever database ink tone in Kintone, it's going to be one. Where can I check this? 
once again in the URL up here. Um, I can't zoom in on the URL, but it's right up here. This is app number 55 for me. Um, but for you, it's probably gonna be app number one. So in your Kingtone app ID, I'm going to put 55 because this was database number 55. Check your URL bar up at the very top of your browser and you'll see like slash 55 or something like that, right? If you have the app open, that is. If you're on your homepage, it'll just have your homepage URL. Open up your new app slash database and 55, right? Right up at the top. I know it's a lot of information. Like I said, um, it's very, very hard to, um, it's very, very hard to like, you know, kind of follow along with some random Joe Schmo, like talking and then code along as well. I get it because I used to do it all the time. Um, if you are struggling to follow along, two things that changed my life, like I say a lot of times and I will say probably multiple times. Um, number one, first, just watch, no code along and then try and code along later with the recording, which we have on YouTube. Or number two, if you're like, no, I don't have all that time, get two monitors. My life changed after getting a second monitor. Um, because then I could like have the YouTube video open on one screen and my code ID on like the other screen, right? Change my life. Um, do not go over three monitors because then no one will ever want to hang out with you ever again. I have three monitors. <laughs> yeah, Kenji has three monitors. Good, you're right at the limit, right? Don't go over three. Yep. Um, Genji, yeah, I was wondering, you do not need the ad records setting, just the get and edit, right? Yeah, um, if we were like doing a, um, so we're uploading our code into Kingtone and running it within Kingtone. If you were going to do this on like your own personal server, for example, and um, you wanted to like first create that text string on your own, like for example, if you do like npm run dev, and then like you have it open localhost, right? Like a lot of intro to coding projects do, right? And then you like wanted to create a new record in Kintone, then get that record, then send it to Open API. Then we would need that add record um, one as well. Yep. All right, we put them in strings. Yeah, it's just like a habit. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Um, it just makes. I don't know. I don't know actually why we do it in strings, but um, just do it in strings just in case. I mean. I think that um, a lot of programs and stuff like that will like delimit the strings anyways, delimit as in like take away these quotes, right? You can do single quotes as well. Okay? And um, it knows to like parse the strings. So the quotes go away in the end eventually for any string technically, right? It all gets boiled down to machine code, right? Yeah. All right, so um, we have our base URL, we have our username and um, we also have Hopefully you have your password and stuff like that and your API token ready. The last thing that we're going to do is um, we are going to, oops, this is developer. The last thing that we are going to do now is we are going to go to open AI's um, AI platform and we are going to go get our open AI API token. And then we'll be done connecting our database like that. We cool? So um, if I could get in the chat, real quick, a open AI. I have my account right here. Um, yep, I actually already had it open. Hey, look at that. Let's log out, why not? So um, if you go to the uh, open AI, I'm gonna go over field codes when I make the database. That should be good. Um, so we have our open AI and we wanna get an API token. Right, um, this is a third-party site. We're not affiliated with OpenAI at all. Just, you know, putting that out there. However you wanna log into this, um, you know, you have to sign up and stuff like that. I just did it with Google just cause I was kind of lazy. So I did sean.quinto.com, boom. And, you know, it let me in. And um, you need to generate an API token. So what you do is pure is personal. It's been a while. So I think, oh yeah, they have something. View API keys, that's nice. Yeah. 
Can you share the repo and other links again? Hey, uh, Want you to do that? Yeah. Thanks for asking. I am always lazy and log in with Google. Yeah, it's the way to be. Yeah. Hey, the day the day Google gets hacked, like it's over for so many people. Yeah. Yep. So um, we're gonna create a new API key, and it should be pretty easy. You know, OpenAI seems to know a little thing or two about coding and um, user experience. So um, let's see, API key for really cool workshop. Create my secret key. Ooh, here it is. Please save the secret key somewhere safe and accessible. You will not be able to view it again. If you lose the secret key, you need to generate a new one. Very cool. Um, everyone can view mine right here. I will be deleting it later. I will be deleting it later. Take that secret key and put it right here in your .env file. Bada bing, bada boom. I mean, it's a free account. They give you free tokens, so I guess worst comes to worst, someone uses up all of my free tokens, uh, which is kind of mean. Don't do that, but, you know, whatever. Where's my billing? Yeah, no, I don't have anything like that. Usage limits. Yeah, I don't have anything like that either. Where can I see my... Uh, where can I see, like, how much of my stuff I've used? Usage, there we go. Yeah. I have used 77 cents. How many tokens? I think you get like $18. And in making this like um, entire workshop and like bumbling my way through like a million API calls, I think I've still only used like $3. So it's actually pretty generous. Um, and I think you get new tokens every month as well. Pretty cool setup, you know. Obviously, OpenAI is probably taking your data and using it to train more AI. So um, if you're conscious about that sort of thing, you know, think about it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, this is when I started doing this. Yeah, pretty cool. I have used 47 cents. Rock on. Stick it to the man. All right, so if you have gotten your open API or open AI API token, then we can go ahead and, um, well, I'm going to keep this API reference open real quick. But, um, and you have posted that into your M file, then give me a quick uh, emoji in the chat. And um, we are done connecting our database to our code. And next, we are going to make our database, and that will not take more than 10 minutes. And then we are going to um, start coding, and hopefully, we can get this all done. Ah, uh, radical. Ash, stop using ghosts. Thank you. Mark, robots, invasion. Very cool. Arif, very nice. Very cool to see so many people here today as well. Once again, I'm Sean. We have Genji and Jesslyn here with us. Um, and also Mr. Tanaka working the cameras, stuff like that. He went to go get a coffee, though. And, um, you know, we're from King Town. It's a pretty cool um, online collaboration and, you know, web database. I'll go into the details about like how easy it makes your life a little bit later. And uh, yeah, we're based in Japan, been around for a while. Cool, cool, cool. All right, and um, since uh, we have a little bit of time, where can I get the recorded videos of the session? That is our YouTube channel, thank you. Totally not paid for chat member. Your check is in the mail. You can get it from our YouTube, that which Genji or Jesslyn will link in the chat. Hopefully. Awesome. Jeffrey, nice coffee. This one that I'm drinking today is from Tolis, which is really big in Japan for whatever reason. Um, almost as big as Starbucks. And this is their honey milk. I really like honey. So um, yeah, it is like a honey flavored. Yeah. So we have one last thing to do. I um I lied about connecting the database. There's one last thing that we have to do that I forgot to do. Um, in your code, right here, you have this customize manifest.json. Please click on that customize manifest.json. And what this JSON file is, it is for our um, it is for our Kintone customized uploader tool that is going to be uploading. And if you look at here, 
This tells us, hey, which database am I uploading to? Also, what files am I uploading, right? That's pretty much all it does. Earlier um, in your .env file, you notice your app ID was 55, remember that? Um, or one probably. Um, so right here, mine's going to be the same number, 55 or one or whatever app ID it was. Honey with milk is delicious, I agree. It's 10 p.m. for me right now, and I plan on watching the video. Will you have it uploaded around 6 to 9 a.m.? Uh, <laughs> sure, I'll try. Depends on how much energy I have after this is done, and I go get lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll get right on that, sir. Get right on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll try. I'll try. I do like to edit the video on the same day, just while it's fresh, and that way I can like get it done with, right? Um, yeah, please make sure though in your customized dash manifest.json that you uh, put your app ID in here as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. Not strictly um, necessary for our code, so to speak. It is only necessary for the Kintone customized uploader to upload our code automatically to our Kintone database. Um, you can upload it manually by hand if you need to, and therefore rendering this file not useful. But um, Alrighty, we have finally connected our database to our code. Next thing that we are going to do now is actually create the database um, fields and kind of like work out like what information, how we're going to present it to our user and how we're going to send it. Um, right now, our database has no columns in it, right? It has no columns. So like think of a database or for um, customers, right? You have your customer name column and then you have like, you know, Joe Schmo, Biddy, Biddy, Bartholomew. And then you have another column that says a customer email, and then you have your emails and stuff like that. It all goes in columns and rows, right? Kintone kind of makes it easy to um, create and visualize like how you um, create this by like using no code, which I really like. It's really fast as well. So what you're going to do, please, in your um, Kintone subdomain, open up your app, whatever you named it. I named mine AI Image App 2. You can name it whatever. And you're gonna see like this blank screen with like just record number, right? Just like what um, what record is this, AKA like what field in our database this is. Please click on this cog wheel. And this is how you edit your um, database at any time. You just click on the cog wheel. It's a pretty universal sign, right? And we are going to drag and drop some of our fields here in order to kind of like build out what we wanna to pass to our um, AI app. If you were kind of looking earlier um, at what we are going to make, right? I think, um, let me open this up in another tab as well, just so I can kind of show you that. What we had over here is we wanted to create like a kind of easy way to like pick a couple options and then we're gonna build a string from those options and then send it to open API, right? So like, to be 100% fair, it doesn't really matter like how you format this, it doesn't have to be dog, cat, you know, it could be walrus and um, lizard, you know, whatever. Um, you can do this. We're just gonna try and go along this just to keep things simple as well, because that's kind of like what our, you know, tutorials and our stuff that we prepared is for, but like you can definitely customize this later, all right? So the first thing that we wanna do is we are going to have an option between a dog and a cat, sure. We're gonna have a dog and a cat, and the way that I like to do options in my database is a radio button, right? You can pick one or the other. So click and drag that radio button into your Kintome field right here. And then what we're gonna be doing every time is we're gonna be clicking on settings. The first time I'm gonna go through it really slow and then we're gonna kind of slowly speed up over time, right? So you click on your settings, we have our radio button settings. Okay, what is the name of this radio button? Well, it's gonna be a dog or cat, right? So um, what do, what does our end user want? I want a dot, 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 right? You can name it just animal too, if I guess, if you want to. And we have two options. We have dog or cat. Um, if you do uppercase right here, the, um, this is the actual value that we're going to be getting with our app and sending to, um, sending to open AI's API. So if you do like uppercase D for dog, it'll be like, I want a uppercase D dog. 
I don't know if the AI will forgive that. I mean, it probably wouldn't care, but you know, I try and keep things like a little bit more like natural Englishy. This one, our layout horizontal vertical does not matter. Default is dog, sure. And then the last part that we're going to be editing um, for all of these is what's called a field code, right? And what a field code is in Kintone, it is basically saying what value of our database um, are we going to build? What is the column name basically of our database? Um, when we get our information later in our code, we're going to be referencing this field code. It's code, so it is case sensitive. Here, we're going to just put animal. Right, animal. And later on, we're code um, when we make our API request to our database to get which animal our users picked, right? We're going to say like get record dot animal dot value, basically is where this is going to be used. Click save. Click save one more time. And we have our first field done. Um in the chat, Genji has kind of like passed along like what we need to put in there. We need two radio buttons, we need some text, we need a checkbox, date and time and attachment as well. And if you are kind of lost, I have this all um, written out in the um, steps for the workshop as well. So do not worry if you're like scrambling around. It's okay, totally okay. Uh, does Kintone have a preferred naming convention uh, for the field code? No, um, I prefer camel case. Is that what it is? Well, I guess it's not technically the camel case, right? Like first word, lowercase, second word, uppercase is usually what I do. So let's put another radio button in. The next thing that we wanted in our app was um, how, what is the emotion of our animal? So we have a couple more options here. So who looks, dot, 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 question mark. And we're gonna have a couple options here. So uh, they can't look a bunch of different things at the same time, that'd be confusing. So we'll have happy, uh, sad, perplexed. And then um, angry, sure. Although the angry one usually tends to make like really ugly images for whatever reason, like in our example that we showed you. I think this one was like, where'd it go? This was like an angry cat or something like holding a rabbit or something like that. It's disgusting. Um, so maybe don't do angry if you want cute animals. So it's gonna look happy, sad, perplexed, or angry. And um, our field code here is going to be emotion. Right, so we can reference it later. Lowercase e, emotion. Click save, click save one more time. I'm going to speed up a little bit now. Our next one is going to be like kind of like a free input area, just so a random thing. And it's gonna be what they're holding. Um, so I do a text field right here. Holding a, what are they holding? You can put whatever you want in there. Um, I'm gonna do a default value of, let's see, coffee. Sure, why not? Boston coffee. And I just named this one random because it's the random input. Um, you know, if you can think of a better field code, you know, think about it. But in our code base, we're referencing this as random later. So click save right there. Next thing, clothes, clothes. So the clothes I got a little bit fancy with. Um, all of these are kind of like, you know, separate... Um, like options that can be one of the other clothes, you can have multiple clothes on, right? Um, so what I did was check boxes. And I'm gonna do check boxes. You could also do a multi-choice, I guess, if you want, but I like the look of the check boxes. And they're going to be wearing, these names up here don't actually get used in our code, so you don't have to worry about them too much. What does get used in our code is our options and our field code. So they're gonna be wearing a, a hat, um, let's see, a jacket, or uh, new shoes, okay. And we're gonna name this one clothes, save, save. And that's going to be the end of our text, like input portion, but we also need to tell our database like, hey, later on, we're going to be uploading and saving an image and also the date and time that that image was created as well. So you're gonna do two more fields, here, and then we're gonna do two what's called blank space fields later, I'll get into that. So you're gonna do the date and time. This is a date time. And um, we're just gonna do, yeah, date and time is fine. The field code you need to change though to lowercase d, date, no space, uppercase t, time, date, time, date, time. 
And entering in these field codes by hand, it is a large source for errors. So definitely double check later on if you're like, oh, my code doesn't work, something's bugging out. Check your field codes always. In any code base, eventually, at some point, you're going to have to hand type like what field this is. It's just, you know, unless you have cool automation tools to do it. So um, just be careful here, you know, type out your field codes. Okay, make sure you click save. And the last thing that we're going to do is an attachment field, right? We're going to be attaching our images to the um, to this record as well. So go into the settings of the attachment field. And I guess I called it result. So we'll do that. Thumbnail size doesn't really matter, but your field code lowercase r result. So I'll write that's the result of our API calls. Cool. I'll do a quick check-in. Why is it called attachment? Um, probably because we're in Japan and everyone thinks in like email terms still. So calling it attachment was probably just a direct translation. It's attached to the record. I never really thought about that. How's Japan? Looks good. All right, and then last two things. Um, we have two like hidden images um, that we need to, or two hidden things that we need to put into our app right here. And one of them is going to be the space where our button is. Remember that we had like this generate images button in our app? We need to like create a space for that to go to. And then we also need to create a space for our spinner to like spin while it's loading our, um, or it's making our API calls. Down here at the bottom, you're going to see this blank space Put a blank space up here at the top and then go to settings right here. And this is gonna actually just create like an empty HTML div um, that we can reference in our code. It's actually very useful. And um, this one at the top is gonna be for our button. So generate button, generate with a lowercase g, uppercase b, generate button. Yep. And click save. And then the very last one um, is gonna be our spinner. So where do we want our spinner to appear? Right. Um, this is just kind of, I could edit that spinner with like HTML, CSS later on, but I was just lazy. I put it kind of in the middle of my app, you know, just so the spinner would kind of appear in the middle. Let's go into settings right here. And this element idea is going to be lowercase s spinner, S P I N N E R, save. Whew, we're done. We're done. Click save form. And, um, Always, always, always make sure you click update app over here. Please update the app. Um, I don't know how many times I've like navigated away from the page and then there was, you know, I had to redo it. And we have basically made the columns in our database. Um, I was kind of explaining things, which is why it took a little bit of time. Like I still kept my promise of under 10 minutes. I will say that. If I wasn't talking, I would have been done in like three minutes, um, which is really fast, right? For creating type safe databases that you can reference. And that's one reason why I like Kintone a lot. Like it just lets me finish my backend stuff and get to coding on the front end, which is really cool. Yep. Next, in order to test out our database, let's add some information for it for now. We're not gonna be able to do anything with the information, but um, click on that plus on the top right and then um, fill this out just however you want. We're gonna do a sad cat holding the coffee, wearing a jacket. And um, click save up here. There you go. And you'll be taken to that information. If you just click on this um, breadcrumb up here, like AI image app two or whatever your app name was, you can get back to this um, main view as well. Once you have finished um, creating your database fields and put in like one record, into your database. Um, check in with me in the chat. Use a different emoji, please. I'm tired of seeing the same emojis all the time. Go for the rare emojis. That's not rare, although it is a good one. Oh yeah, three ghosts, very good. Could you show that process again? Process of making the um, fields. It was a pretty long process, so I'm gonna unfortunately have to say no, right here. I will not. No, hold on. No, I have to check all these. Not that. Okay. 
not that that's good because that was a pretty long thing um, and i was just going to tell you to watch the video um, the adding data you just click this plus button up here and then you can add a new entry into your database and then you click uh, save up the top it has default values as well yeah you good i didn't want to be sassy there but that was a pretty long process who did the best one right here? Lucas, I like your game pad. Chadrick, guy with stick, I guess, I guess like blind guy. That one's cool though. Sometimes I feel like that when I'm trying to learn how to code stuff. Um, I get it. I see a couple of Japans, Ragon. BT, hypnotizes me, very cool. Zombie, awesome, you know, radical. Ooh, Troy, shell, I like that one. Shell is cool. Pancake, no, that's a waffle, yeah. Cool. You guys have a good taste. Phew. So we've um we've made our app. That's awesome. I thought I'm gonna have some papers here. Just throw them away real quick. Um, and we've generated our API key as well. So um, we're actually ready to get started coding, which is pretty cool. And um, yep. I think um, it seems like a lot of people are ready to get going, and that's great because you know, we're on the clock. We're on the clock. So, everyone, please go over to your VS Code. And um, I'm going to start out with just a brief overview of what our code base kind of looks like. And there are, like I said earlier, some places that are done for you. Um, we are only going to be coding in main.js here today. But our main.js references and uses these two API calls that we have set up for you. If you're like, whoa, 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 I want to learn how to make these API calls, we have an awesome um, YouTube video um, about how to make API calls from various different types of code bases. Um, you know, pure JS and V, yeah, sure. Svelte, yep, React, yep. We have all those videos. Check them out if you're interested in that sort of thing. I'm going to briefly talk about what our API um, requests look like right there. Um, and then we'll talk about main.js and like what we have to code and then what we um, Kind of had code out for you also this b64 to blob function um i said earlier but uh that is just a helper function that i found on stack overflow that just converts b64 base 64 to a um, file blob uh, format for us which is really helpful yeah i want to watch those videos later yes thank you gabriel check is in the mail great all right so what we're going to be doing in our main.js, we have a little bit of boilerplate here for you, but what we have at the very, very top after our kind of like imports and stuff like that is um, we have this immediately invoked function or anonymous function. And I do have to talk a little bit about this. This is kind of like a Kintone convention. Um, basically this JavaScript upon being read is going to immediately just start doing whatever within these brackets, right? It's a function, so it's like it does something, right? And um, we do an immediately invoked function or an anonymous function without names in order to prevent some conflicts that might happen. Um, like really, really rare chance, like a million to one, to be honest. But Kintone is a fancy web database, right? And you're uploading this JavaScript to it. So like when we were making our database earlier, right? And we dragged the text field on there. There's probably some function in there called like drag text field, right? And um, if you just happen to like accidentally name one of your functions, to be the same as in the same namespace, like which is the the main namespace, as in like top level namespace. Like if you name this like drag text field, then it might cause a conflict like that, and then nothing would work. Cause it'd be like, hey, which function are you talking about again? Right. Um, so we always start out with um, when we're uploading directly to Kintone with what's called a immediately invoked function or anonymous function. Cool detail. And if you ever use it in your code base and you're talking to some developer at like a code interview. Just busting out those terms, anonymous function or immediately invoked function, will get you street cred and maybe a job. So immediately do whatever is in these brackets. Okay, got it. Here, since we're uploading to Kingtone, we can say like, hey, in Kingtone, when you show the details of a record, what is the show page of a record? It is this page when we are clicked on here and we're looking at one of these records. We're showing this record. This is the one that I made earlier, right? I want a cat who looks sad holding coffee, right? 
So when you show this, um, when you show a page like that, I want you to do blah, 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 like that. We have what's called an event in here, and that gives us direct access to our variables um, within our Kintone database. If you are not uploading directly to Kintone, if you're doing it on like localhost with like uh, npm run dev, which is totally okay as well, you would first have to do an API call to the database to get the data. Then once you get the data, send it to your um, open AI. Uh, and then once you get that back, then send it back to Kintone, right? There would be an extra step because we're doing it directly, uploading it directly into Kintone just to practice API calls. Um, we have direct access to that data just by typing out stuff like, for example, event dot record. So get whatever record it is we're looking at. And then remember those field codes that we did earlier? That is how we're going to be referencing um, our code later on. Not right now, but like, remember I did animal, like dog or cat, right? I named that field animal with a lowercase um, a, and then dot value. Don't forget dot value at the end because it's asking for the value of the animal field, not the animal field itself, right? Yep, the variables are in event as well. So that's a big hint for later if you just want to get started coding right off the bat as well. Um, you know, we need to basically build out and get those variables, okay? All right, so we're going to, we have a helper function right here. I've mentioned this um, to convert B64, you know? You can just Google that and it'll show up on Stack Overflow. Not my code, but it does work. It's here, we have a prompt builder and it says the text that we will give to the OpenAI API to do. So we're gonna be coding this out together and what's going to happen is um, we're going to be getting, just like I showed you earlier, right? Event.record.animal. And we're going to be like putting those into like a kind of like Englishy string in order to send to our open AI API. Yeah. Um, oh, I marked this one as not too important too. Here's some spinner options. Um, that's just for our spinner. It's like some CSS. Um, I just included this, so it, it's like all default as well. If you're really interested, I guess you could check out spin.js and their documentation. It's all just default that I copy pasted um, from their like get started section. I wouldn't worry about this too much. You can edit it if you wanna make your spinner cool. Here on line 44, we have a post body. This is very important, right? Post get is a convention for making API calls, right? And so our post body, um, how I formatted this is actually, if we go all the way back to our open API reference, I'm gonna go all the way back. Yeah, log in, log out. There you go. In our create image API endpoint, which we're going to be hitting up. So they ask for a post body or a request body, right? We're making a request to them. And um, what they ask for is a prompt right? As in like, what kind of image do you want to generate? The N is the number of images could be between one or 10. We're just doing one for now. Yeah. And then the size of the image, um, bigger sized images will use more credits. So if you're like, you know, don't want to pay for credits then just do a small one of like 512 by 512 to 256. Um, I think we hard coded in here 512 by 512. You know, that's just the resolution of the image. You can change that if you really, really want to. And then there's a couple things that it doesn't really mention here, um, which is kind of funny actually that um, it doesn't. There is a part in here. Oh yeah, response format. Um, this is optional and that's why it doesn't show it over here on the right, but it says response format. The format in which generated images are returned must be one of URL or B64 underscore JSON. So a lot of these are, um, we just designated, we only want one image, right? Um, and don't change it to two right now. You'd have to edit our code and um, you'd have to like loop through the images and like display them or save them. If you want to do that as a challenge, you can. We're just doing one image right now. Um, size and the response format, these are all just hard coded because that's what we want. Um, definitely play around with these later if you want. But this prompt right here, right? This prompt is equal to a function. What the heck is that? Called prompt builder. This is what we named up here on line 15, 16, 17 ish, right? This is our prompt builder. So whatever this prompt, function, prompt builder function returns, it's going to return some kind of um, data. That's going to be what our prompt is. Okay? So up here in our prompt builders, we're gonna be like building out our English string in order to um, basically send to OpenAI's API, yeah? 
Um, we have some other stuff down here with our spinner. Like I said, it's not a spinner workshop. It's an API and AI image creation workshop. So I just kind of pasted in this spinner stuff um, for you. But what we're doing basically is remember those blank spaces that we uh, created earlier? We're basically like just inserting that spinner and also this generation button, um, that the button that said like generate image. We're just putting those into the blank spaces right here. And then we're giving that generate button an on click function. Right, you want all the like magic to happen, all the API requests to happen after you click the generate button, right? You didn't want to do it like um, as soon as the user views the page, something like that. You wanted this to be on click. In this on click function later, we're going to be calling the open AI API, getting back some data, working with that data, and then saving it to our king tone, right? So this is we have two places basically that we need to code today in our main.js. Number one is going to be the prompt builder, and this is going to be kind of an easier part where we work with strings, you know, getting data, putting it into some strings, using a little bit of interpolation. And then down here is going to be a little bit more advanced where we um, basically are going to be making some asynchronous ooh -hoo, um, API calls. This code is blowing up my mind. I will go through it. We're going to go through it together. And like I said, always watch the tutorial, the tutorial twice. It'll be good. So in order though, we going, we're going to like make this, um, I guess we'll make the string first and then I'll talk about like how we pass that string to OpenAI's um, API and then how we save it to Kingtone. Does that sound okay? Yeah. So in our prompt builder, like I said earlier, we have access to our um, variables in our Kingtone database, right? I have a cat who looks sad who is holding a coffee, right? So I want to get access to that and kind of like build it into a string so I can send it to OpenAI's API, yeah? So at the very end of this function, we're going to return a prompt string. So, okay, let's make something called prompt string, right? So let prompt string, thank you, ID, equal. So what is this going to equal out to? Well. We did get a little bit fancy with the clothes. So first, let's just get like everything but the clothes of our prompt string, and then we'll kind of work out what to do there later. And the way that we're going to put our variables in, right? Because normally when you have a string, right, you could do something like this, a space plus, and then we want to get our variable, okay? So it's going to be event dot record, right? We have access to this event. This is a kind of a king tone thing. So if you're not used to it, that's okay. You know, event dot record dot animal dot value is going to be what's going here. So in my record that I made earlier, right? This animal field was cat. So this is going to basically resolve out to cat. So we have a cat and you could do this with like plus, 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 right? Like the, and that's totally valid JavaScript and um, is, is a little bit messy, you know? And one way that I prefer to do things is string interpolation. And also it sounds cool when you like, oh yeah, string interpolation, I know what that is, you know? It just sounds cool when you bust it out at the interview. So I'm gonna type A, and what you do here is backticks. Do you all have backticks on your um, keyboards? They're usually um, on the same key as like this little tilde. I think, um, or they might be up on the number keys up at the top. So if you have backticks, you know, you need to do backticks for string interpolation. What you can do, it'll turn into this weird shade of green, but you can do A, and then you can directly put um, variables into your string like this using a dollar sign and two curly brackets. Event.record.animal. Oh, Jeffrey, that's awesome. Genji, awesome, like that. You were a little bit slower than uh, Genji, so unfortunately you lose this time, Jeffrey, but radical. I appreciate that. Dot value. And then you can kind of keep coding more naturally without all these like unnecessary like plus um, pluses that we were doing earlier, right? So we have a cat who looks, another interpolation, so dollar sign and curly brackets like that, event dot record dot Emotion, remember we called that one emotion. If you want to double check your field codes, um, we did link them earlier in the chat. But um, if you really, really want to double check that you made, that you did them right, click on the cogwheel, 
click on the, each field's settings in the cog wheel and you can go down to field code, lowercase a, animal, right? If you're having a lot of um, trouble following along, then um, Genji has posted some code in the um, chat as well. But we did animal, lowercase a, emotion, lowercase e, random, lowercase r. So let's do those first. Who looks sad holding a dollar sign. Um, we'll do event.record.random is what I called it, value. Yep. And we're going to stop right there. And maybe I'll format this. Will this split it up? No. Can I do this? That might introduce a new line character in my code. So I'm just going to make it sprawl across my code base, right? So what we have right now is totally valid to send. And uh, we could stop right here if we we're going to ignore the close. Um, our prompt string is a animal who looks emotion holding a something, right? Pretty cool. Um, we got a little bit fancy with the clothes though, right? If you look at our clothes options um, when we're making one of these, they could have one of these, two of these, three of these, or none of these as well, right? And so we got a little bit fancy, but it's a good chance to practice um, loops, you know? So what we're going to do is for each one of these, big hint right there, um, for each one of our clothes, we are going to kind of loop through them and um, basically they see like if they exist and then if they exist then add them to the string right here. Is there a semicolon um, at the end? Yeah, there could be. Um, I don't think a lot of um, JavaScript like really cares. And I think maybe they might even like add the semicolon in for you um, when it gets minified, but yeah, good catch. Hello from the UK. Hey, it must be like two in the morning or something over there. So how are we going to get our clothes, right? Well, I kind of like dropped a big hint earlier, right? We need to loop through each of our clothes, right? So first of all, let's get our clothes. So let our clothes uh, array, right? An array is a collection of data, yeah? A clothes array is equal to event.record.close.value. Okay, so now we have access to this and this is going to be an array, so it's going to be in um, it's going to be in square brackets and it's gonna have multiple things in there or none, right? So let's see, for each one, close array dot for each. Oh yes, thank you, ID, it did it for me. Oh, but it did, that was dumb. Okay, ID is gonna do this for me if I do for each. Oh, thank you, please, for each. There you go. It's It does it for you, right, if you like type it right, it's so silly. Um, but how you type this out, I'm just going to do it manually because that was dumb. Close array dot for each. And then for each, we're going to have two parameters in here, right? And um, I called them options in our code. So I'm going to call it an option right here. It's an option, right? They might have a hat. They might not. They might have a... Um, you know, they might have a jacket, they might not, right? So it's just an optional piece of clothing. They're animals, so it's okay if they're not wearing clothes. Um, and then they have what's called an index right here, right? So what the index is, is like, which um, position are we in our array of clothes, right? Because it could have multiple things in there. So are we on option number one, option number two, option number three? If you're new to coding, indexes and arrays start at zero, right? They start at zero. So it's actually going to go zero, one, two. And I think this only had three options in it, so zero, one, two, that's three options, yeah? So we have our option and our index, and with those values, fat arrow, do blah, 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 yeah? Cool, oops, I accidentally have too many uh, quotes here. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, IDE. So, okay, we have each of our options now. So the first thing that we wanna do is um, English-wise, right? This is actually kind of like a problem that I thought about for a while where like you can just kind of like do plus, right? And the way that I set this up in the code is it's wearing, um, this one wasn't wearing anything, hold on. Wearing a jacket, right? But if you have multiple ones, right? You wanna 
like combine them with and, right? That's just like an English thing, right? So like wearing a jacket and a hat and new shoes, right? So we need to like kind of designate like, oh, is this like the first time that we're putting something in there or is it the second time? That's why like we have this kind of fancy um, like check to make sure that it's like the first or second or third option in our array if we have multiple, right? So for example, if, you know, the index, aka like what position we're in is equal to zero, right? If it's the first thing that we're going to be putting onto our string, right? We don't need and, right? It's just going to be wearing a jacket, wearing new shoes, wearing a hat, right? So we can do our prompt string right up above, prompt string, and then plus equals, we don't actually need to put this in interpolation. I'm not sure why I did, but whatever, it's fine. Option, right? So what this will turn out to, this option right here is in our checkboxes, right? A jacket this time. So what this will be is, if we go back up, a cat who looks sad holding a coffee. And then if it's option zero, prompt string, so plus equals, wearing a jacket, right? I think um, this needs to have wearing at the end of it. So I'm going to do wearing a jacket. There we go. That makes more sense to me. Yeah. So holding a coffee. Um, I know I just got here, but I want to stop by and get a recording link. Will I get it via email? You can get it via email. Um, why are you using double instead of triple equal? Because um, I didn't think about it, to be honest, JB. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I could do double as well. It wasn't on purpose. Yeah. It just works as double. Might be better to use triple. Yeah. I, I, I trust you over me, to be honest, JB. All right. So if this is the first option that we're putting on, we're going to be saying wearing a blah, 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 right? After that, so if it's option two or three, like we were wearing multiple pieces of clothing, so we could just add it on there with and. So prompt string equals, and we can do this a different way too, equals prompt string, right? Lots of different ways to code stuff out. Plus, and then we can say and option, yeah? Cool. That was a lot to code out, um, but basically what this is doing, we've built our, our prop string just like by interpolating our values, right? A cat who looks sad, holding a coffee, end. And then at the end we have, oh, I think I need a space here, right? Yeah, that makes sense. This doesn't have a space at the end. So holding a coffee, space, wearing a, and then if it's our first option, wearing a, uh, we don't need A because our options have A in front of them. So that would be AA jacket. So that was my mistake. Wearing a jacket or wearing new shoes, right? Wearing a hat that's included in there. And then after that, if we have multiple pieces of clothing on and new shoes and a jacket and a hat. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Right? This is string. So what happens if nothing is selected? Um, we're lucky that for each is kind of smart for us and nice in JavaScript. It'll just say for each one, oh, well, there's nothing in there. So, okay, do nothing. Um, if you want it to be um, extra safe, you could do, um, here you go, end of line 17, holding A. I have my files up, there we go, how about that? Um, if you want it to be extra safe, you could do like a null check, right? That's a little bit more advanced. Um, you can check for null, always. Check for undefined. For each kind of does that for us, which is nice. Okay, and we have our prompt string um, built out though. Yep. You're welcome, Jeffrey. Anytime. Um, so, yeah, our prompt string is ready. So this is like our text that we're gonna be throwing to our um, OpenAI API. Well, let's um, get ready to actually, you know, do the magic. Let's um, get ready to send it to our API, yeah? Thank you for posting the um, completed code. Yeah, Yenji, I appreciate that. All right, please now go down to line 70-ish. It might be a little bit different depending on how many spaces um, and new lines you have, but line 70-ish where we have our generate button.onclick. 
Um, so in the original one, remember, when we click this button up here, right? We want a bunch of stuff to happen. We want some APIs to um, be fired off, right? So um, what we're gonna do is basically on click, um, we have a little bit of code in there already just for our spinner. Like I said, this is not a spinner workshop, so I just put it in there. Um, what we need to do though, is we need to call our open AI API post function, yeah? Well, it kind of helps to like look at it real quick and see like what it expects, although I kind of touched on it earlier, so I'll go a little bit fast. We are running low on time. If you open up AI post request, um, dot js, which is what we're importing up at the top. Yeah. Yeah, we have some like other stuff like our API token and our URL and our headers and like that. But at the very top, you can see that this function wants what's called a post body. And remember earlier when I was showing you like the open AI um, API docs, right? They want this kind of post body request body technically. I guess I should have named it request body, but they want a prompt and and size. Yeah. Um, and also the type of data. We kind of have that already set up on line uh, 52, right? Um, I didn't want to spend time kind of like building out this um, object, but here's our post body already set up and we built, already did our prompt builder as well. So that's ready, yeah. So what we're going to do right up here, we need to call our open API. So on click, whenever we click that button, mm, okay, sounds pretty cool. We're going to then, we named our function generate images, right? Makes sense, it's a good name. So we're going to do generate images. And we're gonna call that function, right? So when we call the function, we need to pass into it our post body. So we're gonna do post body because that's what we named our information that we're going to send, right? We could have named it something else, but we named it post body. I might change that name for the next time. So we're going to call that function, right? But just calling that function won't actually do anything, right? That function is going to send us back some data. It's going to send us back an image and also a date time. Um, so what we need to do, and we're going to use some asynchronous magic this time, is when we get that data, then I want to do blah, blah, blah. And this is a JavaScript convention. We're actually gonna be mixing up a couple of different asynchronous or like promise-based functions up in here. I'll, I'll try and explain as best I can, you know. It's pretty advanced stuff for a lot of people. But what we have here is dot then. And you can see actually like your, AD, your IDE, like usually will spit out something like this if you just do a dot at the end of a function. Um, dot then just says like, hey, then after you finish that function, after this completes, I want you to continue on to do blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Yep. So our function right here is going to have, it's also going to have some stuff inside of it, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to designate this one as async as well. Because we're also practicing multiple different like kind of like promise-based or time-based parameter things, we could just do like dot then, dot then, dot then, but I also wanted to show you like await inside. I know it's it might not be like the most, you know, intuitive thing to like be mixing these, but I wanted to show them all. So please bear with me there. So then with our async function, we're going to get something that's um, we're going to get some kind of like result back from our generate images um, function, right? We can check that up here in AI post request.js. Function generate images, blah, 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 blah. At the very, very end, it's going to return some data. It's going to give us back some kind of data, yeah? So with that data, we can call it uh, the result, you know? Yeah, sure. I want to do blah, blah, blah. We use a fat arrow, curly brackets, and then um, the end of this dot then promise as well. Yeah. Cool. So what we have now access to is we're going to asynchronously, we're going to like wait for this generate images because it does take time. Um, generating the images on the Dolly endpoint like takes like 10 seconds or something like that, more so. Um, more so sometimes if it's like crowded, right? So you wanna wait for it to finish, eh? We're going to be calling whatever those results are. We're just gonna call it result, you know? And then, yes, Arif, so the result is the data return. Very good, yep, the result is the data that we're getting back from our generate images. So we're saying, hey, do this function up here, this AI post request.js, do that, send out the information, then 
when you get back something, that result, let's work with that result. Let's work with that data. Yeah? Which is in B64 JSON format? So the image is in um, Base64 JSON um, format, yes. But we also get something else back if you um, check right here. We also get a created at. We get this date timestamp as well. So that's the first thing that we're going to work with um, in what we got back from our API call. This created at is a Unix timestamp. Unix timestamp is the time since, what, January 1st, 1970 in like millisecond, no, seconds in seconds or something, eh? Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's not very human readable, but, you know, you see this a lot in computers um, like that. They'll just measure stuff in Unix time. Right. So what we need to do is make this a little bit more readable for people as well. Uh, RP, I gotta head out. Thanks for the watch and support, Sean and Gage. I hope to watch the recorded video later. Cool. That's really good. Yeah. See you later. Thanks for coming. I totally cool. All right. So let's make this um, a little bit more readable. Eh? So we're gonna say our const our Unix timestamp is equal to. Um, so we got this thing called result back, right? Result and looking at the open AI API, it's results and it's, there's gonna be a field called created right here, right? So it's gonna be result.created is what we get. So result.created, and that is going to be our Unix timestamp, okay? Next, we wanna convert that into a more human readable date. Okay, so let's see, uh, const our date is equal to, and this is some um, JavaScript like uh, built-in uh, methods and functions. We have what's called a date object, a new date. So, you know, we have this new date and date objects, um, I did a lot of Googling in order to figure this out. Trust me, I don't have it memorized. I would never memorize, you know, silly stuff like that. Look it up, everyone. That's part of what makes you a good engineer. Yeah. Um, these date objects can take in a um, time in milliseconds. I know, right? Our Unix timestamp that we got is in seconds. We need milliseconds. If you're familiar with metric, milli, like a, uh, for example, what, a millennium is how many years, right? It's a uh, thousand years, yeah? So uh, we have our Unix timestamp. In order to convert that to milliseconds, we multiply by a thousand. Yep. Okay, that gives us a, um, a more readable date. And if we were to like console log this out, we're not gonna do that right now, but if we were to log this out to the console right now, it would give us a um, date that's more like, uh, what is today? April 26th here in Japan. But it wouldn't give us the exact time. And the reason is, is that the default date, I think if you like click on this date object right here, um, and you go into the documentation, I'm really zoomed in, so like it's kind of annoying to look at, but it'll say like it doesn't account for time zone or um, it doesn't account for, it does everything in GMT time, right? Which is just like uh, global time. And we want to display it in our local time, right? Time zones is tough. Um, there's whole JavaScript libraries that just are dedicated to making working with date times easier. So, you know, definitely check those out. But JavaScript does have one cool thing that we can use. It's called the ISO um, date string. And what we do is we take that date that we just made and there's a method on it called to ISO string. Um, and what that will do is that will automatically automatically convert this into a um, time zone aware and also daylight savings time, I think, aware um, date string. At least it was daylight savings times aware for when I checked it. You know, no promises there. I'm not a date master. Don't take that out of context. All right. We got to hurry along here. We're running out of time. So the other thing that we have, and this is the real meat and potatoes, eh? um, we have our base64 data. And how it comes back is um, in this uh, result.data format, right? And we only ask for one um one image back so it's going to be an array but it's only going to have one thing in it so it's going to be space zero so what we're going to do is we're going to do const image blob and a blob is kind of like a um, coding term for just files are called blobs or like it's big large clubs of data actually that's why they call blobs i think and um we are going to basically convert into an image blob and that's how files get passed around on the web right it's not just like strings unfortunately um 
data blobs are like larger, you know, huge, long text strings, basically, of data. And what we're going to do is it comes back in base64. We need to convert this into a blob. Like I said many, many times, I looked up um, basically how to convert from b64 to blob. I don't have this memorized. I put this function here for us to use today. But basically what this takes in is it takes in your base64 and then um, it'll spit out a blob for us, which is really, really nice. It does take a little bit of time, right, um, in order to finish. And so that's where we're going to try and use this other asynchronous um, tool that we have in our toolbox. Remember up here, I marked this function as async. When you mark a function as async, you get access to this really cool keyword called await. And what await does, modern JavaScript, what await does is it um, basically allows you to, like the name implies, await for something to finish and then um, continue on with the rest of your coding or with the rest of your you know, processing, right? So we're going to await this b64 to blob function to finish first and then call that image blob. Does that make sense? Yep. So up here, we have our results. Earlier, we had result.created for our timestamp, looking at the API information. It's going to be result.data in a array. So, okay. We have result.data, which position in the data? We only asked for one image this time. So it's going to be spot number one, aka spot number zero in our data array. Yep. Dot B64 underscore JSON. So the first image in our data array, and it's going to be in B64 JSON. Am I blocking that? Yeah. B64 JSON format. Yep. So that is our image blob that we have right there. Okay, very cool. Now we're going to make that image blob into a file. We're going to tell um, our, music, our code our code base, hey, this is going to be a file that we're going to be uploading. All right, very cool. Let file equal. And this is also kind of like a built-in JavaScript thing. Um, they have an object called file, right? And um, this file, when you put it on, this looks kind of weird, right? File, and then it takes in an array. It's quite strange. And um, I went down like a deep rabbit hole about like image blobs and um, how files are handled on the internet. Complex stuff, but very, very interesting. We need to put it into an array right here. So our image blob. Yep. And then um, what are we going to call it? Um, I just called it test.png right here, just because I was playing around, trying to figure things out. What is the type of our um, what is the type of our file? It's an image slash PNG. Please don't worry if you think I'm going fast. I am going fast. Um, one, because you know we're low on time, but also two, like I, I don't have all this stuff memorized. And so like pretending like, oh yeah, I know what I'm talking about right here. Silly. Look it up, guys. Look it up. You know. And our last modified property is there as well. Thank you, ID is going to be our ISO date string as well. So we can actually include, you know, like when in Windows, like you have Windows Explorer, like file manager, and like there's a image like or file last like opened or last modified field in there. You can actually designate that with this as well, which is kind of cool, right? Yep. Yeah. All right, we have our file. And I think we have everything that we need to upload, right? If you go back to our original um, original app, we are going to get a file and a date time. We need to upload that file and that date time to our Kintone database. Let's check it out. So um, our file right here, and we have our date time as ISO date string. The next thing that we need to do is call our Kintone put request, right? This update Kintone function up here. Update Kintone function and Kintone put request takes in a blob, actually it's a file now, but you know, whatever, and a name as well. Hmm, interesting. Cool, cool, cool. Oh no, oops, my bad. It doesn't take in a blob and a name. We have two um, We have two functions in here. Sorry to say that. We have this const upload file, and I put it at the top, and I should have put it at the bottom because it gets called second. The file that, or the function that we are exporting is called update king tone. And you can see it has export up at the top right here, which means that when we import it, right, export input into our code, we have update king tone is the one that we're calling right here. 
Okay, so why the heck do we have this other file? That is a little bit of um King Tone thing where when you upload a file, it actually takes two steps. You have to upload the file first, then you get back what's called a file key, and then you have to add that file key to the record and it connects them. Um, it's a two-step API dance. And we've done this here for you today. We don't have any tutorials about image attachments, so later on, um, or in the comments right now, if you want me to uh if you want me to do something more with like files and working with um, saving files to Kingtone, we can go through this definitely. Um, we also have API documentations about this as well at kingtone.dev. Are the subdomains public or private? They are public with passwords. So private maybe. Yep. All right. Anyways, so what we have here though is our update Kingtone um, function. It asks for three things. It asks for the record ID, aka like which record are we saving this uh, image to? Our image that we're actually gonna be saving and the date time. All right, well, let's put that into our main.js, eh? Down here at the bottom, after we have all of our stuff, remember that we're still in this dot then async function at the bottom, right? And we're going to be putting in here, so one more time, await update king tone, right? And this update king tone, looking back one more time, it needs a record ID, image, and a date time. How can we get our record ID? Well, we actually have access to that as well uh, because we're doing this within Kintone. But um, let me do event dot record ID right there, lowercase d. Then we need to put in our file, right? Well, we already have a file already in made. And then we have our ISO date string, our date time string. So if we look um, at their Kintone put request, record ID, image file, and then date time, and in our main.js, we are calling the update Kintone function, record ID, file, aka image, and our date time. Really cool, right? Last, lastly, this is more of like, you don't actually need to do anything and um, your, the workshop is actually technically completed at this point, but lastly, like we want to refresh the window when this is all done because um, you know it looks cool and it does it automatically. And that way people can immediately see their um, newly generated image as well. We have this last keyword on here called finally, like that. And you can put, we're not gonna be messing with any data in finally. We're just going to say window.location.reload. This is old school JavaScript stuff where you just reload the window um, directly, telling the browser, hey, reload. And bada bing, bada boom. That is all of our code. I kind of rushed it a little bit at the end, but there's a lot of complex topics in there that I don't think I could explain adequately. Um, especially with a short amount of time. So I definitely encourage you to look up like what is a blob, what is a file, how do date strings, date time strings work, stuff like that. Cool. So we've finished our code. Well, um, now we have to actually upload our code into Kintone as well. And this is where the Kintone Customize Uploader tool that um, we had you download earlier and install earlier comes into play. So Real quick, I'm going to um, finish doing my environment file because I didn't do our super secret password up in here. So I'm going to actually fill in that password real quick off camera. And then um, we're gonna do Kintone customize uploader. But what you do, just so you know, mine's going to fail right here because I don't have my password in. You run in your console right here, npm run build. And that's going to tell Vite, aka our build tool to build out all of our JavaScript and also checks it for errors, which is nice, and our um, CSS into a couple files called CS, style.css and Kintone customization. Then you're going to run npm run upload. Note, mine will fail here. Please run npm build, then npm run upload, and post in the chat if you got any errors or not. Mine's in Japanese because this is a work computer, but it says right there, password authentication failed. I know, I know please double check to make sure that yours has worked. If you followed everything correctly, it will work, I promise. So I'm going to ask Mr. Tanaka real quick to get me off camera for my screen real quick. Tanaka-san, I'm going to capture the screen one time. And I'm going to very quickly put in my super secret password into my M file. I forgot. <laughs> Uh, 
going to do that real quick. I always forget what the password is. Why is this so small? Boom, 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 boom. Uh, dev events. Yeah, I'm looking up passwords. So failed to find your M file. Um, it is working for your Lily. Oh, very cool. Gabriel, Aaron Japanese is cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel cool. Uh, hold on just one second. All right, everyone, hold on. Let me get my password real quick. Dev events. Asking for my MacBook's password in order to get the dev events password. Hey, ah, oh, there it is. And post it, paste it into my chat. It's not, I'm a king tone. All right, close that. Hey, gaming capture. Tanaka san. We're back. All right. So if Vite is missing, then um, you should run npm install in the code base. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Yeah. So we're going to do one one more time. npm run build. Every time that you change the code, you have to run npm run build, by the way, if you're trying to debug. Awesome. I've built mine. And then we're going to do upload one more time. I think I got my password, right? You never know. Come up. Yep. Nope, it failed. No. Oh. All right. I don't want to bore you guys with um, password stuff. So I'm going to be paying attention to you to see if it uploaded as well. Isn't it supposed to be at root? Uh, I'm at root. I'm at root. JB, it worked for me. Hey, that's good. I just, um, my password's wrong. It's telling me right here, like password authentication field. Oh, I'll get it. You know. Yeah. Um, so what you're going to do, yeah, test it. So I want everyone, um, while you're testing it, if you're um, in here, go to your AI image generator gallery and fill it out once. So go to, back to your Kingtone app and um, fill it out. Right? I want a cat who is sad, holding a uh, coffee, wearing a jacket and a hat. Save it. Generate images button. Time to make some amazing AI art. Oh yeah, amazing. My cool spinner is spinning. If you open up the console over here, you can see, what is this weird techno cat? The heck is that? <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, if you open up the console over here, if you're seeing like some errors, you can also, um, you can also like see like the API calls and stuff happening. But um, please everyone, so how do we test it? Yeah, go into your um, Kingtone subdomain that you um, created and make some, Oh yeah, hipster cat. They all have like this like kind of greenish hat. I'm not sure why. I like this one's like stinky face. So let's see. Um, if you're getting errors though, then please let us know in the chat. We are almost exactly at time, but I'm going to stick around just for a little bit um, and debug with you all and um, also talk. Like that. So the image did not generate for me. I'm not getting a result. Great. Um, so what we're going to do then is please open up the uh, console over here. The spinning part is working. Well, that's the most important thing, right? So please post some uh, errors and stuff in the chat real quick if you have your console open. Yep, also glance through the debugging as well. For those of you who it did work and you were able to, um, if you were able to um, get it working like that, then we're going to pass you a survey to finish out real quick and we're gonna move things kind of um, at the same time right here. So if you're all done and you're like good with the code, then um, please fill out our survey and you get a chance to get an awesome um, Amazon gift card no matter where you live. And if you live in North America, you can get some swag no matter what. If the spinner is working, check. Could we get an email of the recording? Um, do uh, we? Subscribe to our YouTube. Yeah, subscribe. Hey, you have to subscribe. That's that's how we're gonna do it. It says uncaught error. That's good, JB. So tell me what it says there, real quick, and I'll we'll see what's going on. Yeah. 
I'm getting this error. So first of all, the Vite build is not working, right? So if you're failing to build, that means that there is a problem with your JavaScript, um, basically. That's a no problem. Yeah. So definitely check that out. Um, that's Node, Genji says. So check your version of Node, check your version of NPM, and um, get back to me about that. We have all of this stuff in the debugging section of our code base. Error comes and goes. Oh yeah, the secret word. Secret word is train. Choo choo train. Choo choo train. Train. Just put train in there. Doesn't matter about case. Thank you for reminding me. Uncaught promises the error. So that means that there is probably an error with um, how our code was typed over here. Right? So I'm going to look through stuff real quick and then make sure that I did everything right. And um, I'm going to, um, how should I go about this? I'm gonna upload once to my own personal. Um, so the spinner is working. I mean, that's great, you know, spinner is working. So LaVar, I get this error, vite build empty out directory. So that is going to be an error with um, your um, node, according to Genji. But also, it looks like your code is failing to build in the first place, so there you might want to double check that. Okay, here's here's the cool thing that you can do. Like that. Go into the uh, workshop and go to solution.md, right? And just copy paste all of this. Yeah. Not all of it. Almost all of it. Don't copy the back ticks and the JS at the top, right? And then just plop this in here, and then upload and see if um see if anything changes. Okay, it should be the exact same as what's up in here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a lot of console logs in there um, this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're not getting any images at all, so what I would do is, if you go into API post request, I don't know, console.log, like data right here, and check that out. This is our first time doing this, um, this is our first time doing this workshop as well, so I anticipate errors. It's gonna happen every time. So spinner comes, no images. Same here, no images. Okay, so that means that our function is firing off. Your code is uploading well. Um, there might be an error with how we're giving our information to open API, and it's not giving us back an image. It's definitely possible. So when the AI post request, um, put like console.log data right here and just see if it um if it's giving you an error or not. Yeah. I'm going to one more time try a password authentication for um this workshop. Oh, no, wait, I have a, I have a good idea. I have a great idea. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete this real quick. Do I need to set up a paid account in OpenAPI? No, I have not, I didn't pay for anything. Um, do make sure that your API key is correct and like all that stuff, but you shouldn't have to pay for anything. I have, I have not paid a dime to OpenAPI. API. <laughs> you did it so proudly. Yeah. I am proud of that. Um, let's see, what else? So if it's uploading correctly, so if you see the spinner, then you've uploaded correctly. So it's not customized manifest, it's not your M file or anything like that. Um, I still think that it's gonna be somewhere in this asynchronous function that um, there might've been some kind of bug. Oops. I'll just change the password later. Everyone has to change the password. All right, well, password is here then. That's cool. Developer, dev events, dev events. Hmm. Yeah, seems all right. <laughs> Interesting. Kintone response handler. 
So am I am I uploading? If you are um if you want to check if you're being if you're able to make images, you can also go to the Open API. Um, go to your account as well, and in Manage Account, you can see your usage as well. So you can see that like I I created some images today, on the twenty fifth of April, twenty sixth of April. So you can check right here to see um, to see if you're making images. Possible. Doesn't look like I'm making any. All right, so that's a good thing. So that means that uh, the way that we are passing data to OpenAI seems to be incorrect. Good, 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 good. Good debugging. So we have our OpenAI token right over here. Has anyone um, console logged out um, on the AI post request right up here? After you console log out, um, or if you change the code, make sure that you run npm run build and then npm run upload. Yeah. Make sure that you build and upload. Mine's not going to work again because I didn't change the uh, password. Hold on just a second. Oops. Yeah. There you go. New password is going to be test password. Test password. I changed my password. Test password one. Come on. I will be changing that again. Can I change the num name of my subdomain? No. But you can make a new subdomain later, and your current one will die after 90 days of not being used. Um, dot .emb right here. Test. Password one, very secure. NPM run build, NPM run upload. Okay, there you go. So I have uploaded mine and then um, no privilege to proceed. Ooh, interesting. Is it add record? Do I need add record? Will you write this whole time? No, 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 no. Yeah, sure. I mean, it says no privilege to proceed. What is it? Lucas, I made the image according to OpenAI usage, but I, it has not appeared on Kintone. Where are you passing console.log? My username should be my email, right? That is correct. Can I change the name of my subdomain? No. All right. Um, so if you've made the image, then it has not appeared at Kintone. That is cool. Um, where am I passing console.log? I pass console.log in um, the API, OpenAI API post request right here on line 17. So I just want to see like what it was saying. So I've done mine. Let's test it real quick. Um, app 55, I think, is where I had this. So happy dog holding coffee. Yeah, there's my stuff. Boom. Spinny. Waiting for a response. Created. Upload. Hey, I got an image. So now let's go back to um, to main.js. Control Z. So this is what we typed out together right here. So I'm going to check that now. So worst case, um, worst comes to worst, our finished code solution um, in the docs folder is correct. npm run upload. It says that I have uploaded, reload the file, generate images. If this fails, then that was my coding out live inexperience. It says created. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting these stinky AI images. Um, so definitely double check um, your settings, everyone. Um, what we coded out live does, you know, Work. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will change my password. 
of course, I will change my password. I mean, it's it's just a Kintone subdomain. There's not that much damage anyone could really do. You change your password. Mine is not working. Yeah, so, I mean, my, my error was that, like, I just was having that. So mine is not working. It's not creating images. All right, so what I would do is, one more time, um, I have console.logged in AI post request.js. I have console logged out this data right here. Um, check that out. I'll, I will stick with you as long as it takes. You know, it's totally fine. So on line 17, I added in a uh, console.log for data. Yep. And then um, every time you change something, right? Run build. Run upload. And if you are um, if you're still around just chatting, the error comes and disappears. I think that reload function loads the page and makes it disappear. Possible. Hmm. Genji, it says that I have no privilege to proceed. Did I did you change the password? That's okay, it's okay. I just you know. Uh it, it doesn't actually matter. Um Ours is the working build right now, and I already have the console log. The error comes and disappears. So if you if you think it's the uh, window reload, then um, then what you can do is just comment out, you know, this um, you know window dot location dot reload. I have mine in a dot finally. Do you have yours in dot finally, as well? Where do I go to show the app on Kintone? I just see the records. So if you're talking about the app, if you want to see your apps, it's in your home area right over here. And you can see your apps like AI image app, AI image generator. Um, if you're talking about where can I go to see like the images, then you have to go in the record. Yep. Oh yeah, we got an image. I'll check it out. So let's see. Error. Billing hard limit has been reached. What did you do? <laughs> oh. I uh well there we go, JB. So uh that's really weird though, because I, I, I super promise I have never paid for open AI. I, I have my, my Google Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's not that. It's um, so he's there's not getting um any information back from. Oh, the post volume. Yeah. Ah. So that's basically why it's saying like, hey, data I associating. There is no date. Um, billing hard limit has been reached. Hey. Cool. I got an error. Oops. I mean image. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Phew. That's great. Um. So JB, I did you sign up with? Google, maybe. Yeah. Try a new API token. Yeah, that's really weird. Free trial usage. Okay, does um does free trial usage on the Open API like management setting say anything? Okay. Yeah. Also, fill out the survey, everyone. Otherwise, I'll lose my job. Probably not. Fill out the survey. Where can I find the code? Very good. So um, Arif, the code, um, the finished code is all inside the repository um, up here in docs, in the docs folder. You have the finished code, like here in solution. You also have the steps to finish um, this whole workshop. Yeah, JB. So it should say eighteen dollars. Um, mine says free trial usage two ninety seven out of eighteen. I'll even I'll reload. Yeah. I've used three dollars and one cent of my free trial. It's it's an interesting error to have. 
You don't have any. Okay, so JB, um, I use the solution code. It doesn't work so. So Gabriel, you might need to, um, if you use the solution code, then what you have to make sure, we have like this extra formatting at top. Everything that's underneath this JS and these three backticks, do all that. And then at the very end, there's also three backticks. So don't copy those as well. Free trial. In order to use Open AI API, you need to set up a paid account. That's nuts, JB. And I apologize for that. I, I really thought that it was just all free. I'll um, try and reproduce this um, and try and see if like we can guide people better like that. Hey, you know, you helped out for the next one. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, I, I don't think that they expected to like you know, blow up as much as they did so fast, but you know. Um, so Jude, I don't know why I'm not getting images. I'll get there with you in just a second, Jude. Um, so Gabriel, if you have done the solution code, remember, don't copy these back ticks at the beginning and the end of this um, solution.md. Paste it into main.js. So just like paste it all, save it, and then do npm run build and npm run upload. And upload should also say, you know, like success. Like that, mine's saying error because we already changed our password. Um, thank you, Genji, for that. Yeah, and then if that does not succeed, then um, I'm using a business email. Ah, maybe, maybe, you know. I mean, they are they are a smart AI company. They might be like, "Ooh, this is a business email. Charge them." I have no idea. Although you know, I just use throw away Google account. Um, the last line of my upload command says terminating parent process. Okay, so um, when yours succeeds, it will say terminating parent process as well. So that's fine. But does it say anything up at the top, like kind of like like error or like failed uploading or anything like that, Gabriel? And then um, Jude, if you are not getting images, um, what I would recommend first is check, did you check Jude on the OpenAI um, dashboard that it says that you're making images? JB, um, yeah, no, but thanks for helping us debug that. And I hope that you figure that out, you know. All right, so Jude just says that you're not making any. It just says things like has been uploaded. Okay, so Gabriel, that's good. Jude, also, um, please make sure that um, your customized uploader is uploading as well, kind of like I'm doing with Gabriel right now. So do npm run build, npm run upload, and yours should say success. Mine says failure for password reasons. So then, Gabriel, if it says it has been uploaded and your button's up there, uh, my name's Sean. Hello, Arif. Um, if it says things like has been uploaded, then that means that that's good and your Kintone subdomain will have like, you know, um, is this going to kick me out? No. It should have like a generate images button, stuff like that up top, so that's good. Um, Gabriel, did you put a console.log in this AI post request.js file. Thanks for the workshop. Do you know where the next one will be? The next one will probably be this AI one one more time, just because, like, you know, we usually do it once, fail hard, and then debug it, make it better. Mine says setting has been deployed. Okay, so you, Jude and Gabriel, you are in the same um, area. Jeffrey, yeah, anytime. Jude and Gabriel, you are in the same place. So I'm going to kind of deal with you both at the same time. Next workshop will be what, June? I think it's in June. Um, June yeah. yeah, yeah. Check our YouTube. So then, uh, Jude and Gabriel, um, I want you to please put on line 17 right here, uh, console.log data. All right, cool. Once you have put the console.log data, then do um, npm run build. Yeah, hey, Arif, fill out the survey. Fill out the survey. It only takes like three minutes. Yeah, fill out the survey, guys. I'm gonna lose my job. Probably not though. 
Um, but please do npm run build and npm run upload. And then um, once that happens, then open up with F12 um, on your browser, this kind of like developer's console, and click generate images one more time. What's the secret word? Train, choo-choo train, train. I will. We're gonna try and do this real quick and then uh, I'll guide to form. I sent you a DM for a specific question. I, um, I'm i not sure if I got that DM. Oh, okay, that's cool. Thank you though, Ryan. Um, so Jude and Gabriel, um, once you have done that, and if you clicked um, console.log, then in the console over here on the right, if you open up with F12, it should um, spit out some information when you do generate images. Can you please tell me what it says? And then um, if that doesn't work, then I will probably, it shows nothing in the console. Show.js59 violation added a non-passive event listener to a scroll blocking touch start event. What? I have no idea what that is, but I... <laughs> um, so Gabriel, yours, if yours shows nothing in the console and we are clicking on, um, if we have this console.log in the console, and you're clicking on the button and nothing shows up, that means that the error is before you even make this post request, um, which is pretty early. I would double check the code because if, if um, what you say is correct, then your upload is correct and like you have the generate button, that means that you're able to upload, but your code is um, failing out sometime before this generate images. Is it my M file? I mean, it usually is, but Jude, you said that you're um, able to upload correctly, right? Um, so if it's your M file, then the only thing that might not be correct is your um, your um, open AI token, possibly. Double check your API token for open AI. Yeah, if you're using Chrome, check the dev tools. You know. And then um what I'm going to do is um I would like for this to work especially cuz we're going to do this workshop again cuz it's really fun. Um in June, right? So, I want if I could ask if you really can't figure it out, then um post on our forum real quick and just like copy paste your code and then we can go through it together as well. And the error message. Thank you, Genji. Genji will read your post on the forum because that's, that's his domain. And um, yeah, you should post the error message. This meeting to, is uh, being recorded. To make it easier for him. More information about that error. More neatly formatted information, Thank you. the better. Yeah, Genji will even format it for you. I'm sorry that we couldn't figure it out together, um, Jude and Gabriel, like that. But please post in our forum. Um, can you just link to it right there? And please fill out the uh, the survey as well, like that. Forum is a must survey. I can't force you, but uh, it would help me out if you could. Yeah, I'm going to see if my new API key works. Yeah, I hope so. And um, also check what JB had earlier on your Open AI like um, dashboard. Make sure that you have some kind of like free trial usage right here, right? And then I'm gonna try, yeah, dude, Gabriel, yeah, I appreciate that. And then um, I'm going to try, yeah, but also check um, this, like make sure that you have like the $18, right? Cause like JB was saying that like, he has no free trial. It says like, you have to sign up for a paid, a paid account. It's just blank, right? So like there might be something to do with like the way that they 
um, you sign up for things now like that. I guess too many people were signing up. Okay, so Jude, that that's probably that's probably what it is. Yeah. Um. So Jude got that, and uh, maybe maybe Gabriel as well. Um. So we're gonna have to look that into that. My bad. Um. Do not do a paid account. Do not do a paid account is my advice. I mean, do whatever you want, but I would say don't pay for it ever. <laughs> but, you know, you do you. Yeah. And what I'm going to do before our next workshop that we do is um, I am going to just make a new account with like a new burner Gmail. Carol, uh, yeah, totally. All right, so yeah, Jude, um, figure out this free trial part right here and please um, post your code as well. Can everyone send LinkedIn? Yeah, um, I think if you search Sean, I don't know, I, I mostly use my uh, LinkedIn for posting stupid jokes. Um, what if you search, search like Sean, King Tone? There's a bunch of Sean's. Yeah, there's me. Hey, look at that. I usually connect with people. And um, please post in our forums, Jude and um, Gabriel as well. And um, we will figure this out together. Okay? But only if you fill out a survey. <laughs> you don't have to. Yep, and thank you for sticking around everything. Um, we will have a edited version of this um, uploaded like that. We will probably edit out all this debugging, not because it's like embarrassing or anything, but, but because we want to keep the videos under one hour. Yeah. And then next time we have this one, we might just replace the video with like a more improved version of this workshop. So thanks for, um, you know, walking through this with me, everyone. I appreciate it. Hope you had a good time, at least. Do you do repeats of workshops? Yeah. Um, do we do repeats? So we'll be repeating uh, this one um, one more time, probably. And then uh, it's saying I need to use a paid account in order to use API under the progress bar. We have progress at. Yeah. So Jude, you have the same um, problem as JB and maybe the same problem as Gabriel. I promise I will check this out and get back to you um, if you post on the forums. If you are like, nah, I'm fine, then I will definitely have this fixed by the next workshop in June. Um, JB, good workshop, bro. Thank you. And then uh, Gabriel, I had an amazing time. Well, that's really good to hear. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. Fun. I put a random console log before the console log data and it doesn't show up either. Woohoo. Um, all right, Gabriel, definitely you then, um, please. Uh, Jude, I think that your error has to do with the paid account. Gabriel, um, post your code, please, uh, on the forums, and I will look through it with Genji. Uh, Tim, thank you. I had a good time. Hey, Tim, you know, you're always welcome. Come by. Cool. All right. So we're going to log off today. Um, I'm going to get some lunch. It's 1230. And then, um, what's it? Oh, yeah, finish slide. Do you have a finish slide? I didn't do a lot of this. It's fine, though. Subscribe. Carol, yeah. Thank the Lord. I finally fixed the hyphen G here. Oh, for your, uh, your permissions? Oh, that's great. Good job, Troy. <laughs> Maybe you can watch the recording or check out the steps. Yeah. Carol, yeah, you're welcome. Always, always welcome to everyone stop by, you know. We like to do these workshops on a bunch of different things. If you fill out the survey, um, then um, we also take ideas for new workshops. This uh, AI one was actually an idea from a um, user as well. So if you have stuff that you want me to go over, um, JavaScript, working with APIs, definitely let us know. I'll do pretty much anything. 
No Python, please. Not a fan. Cool. All right, so we're going to slowly log off over here. Um, thank you, everyone. Gotcha, no Python. <laughs> I love the workshop. Well, hey, I really appreciate that. That's really nice. You know, this was a new new one for us as well. I probably have to trim down on some of the content, make it a little bit faster, but we'll work on that. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I think we're done here for today. I'm going to step away from the camera, and um, I appreciate everyone coming by, and um, I will see you all out there, whether that be on our forums, whether that be on LinkedIn, whether that be on our YouTube. Et cetera, et cetera. Yep, in a while, crocodile. Goodbye. All right, Mr. Tanaka. Signing off. Goodbye, everybody. Woohoo.